Hey everyone, it's me Lone. Hope you're doing alright. This is going to be another one of those videos where I don't have any gameplay. I just sit here and talk about a story straight up because I'll be honest with you, this has been a story that's been bugging me for a fairly long time and it happened to bubble up again on Twitter the other day and just based on the debate and discussion that occurred there, it's very clear that the way the story stands today is incredibly misleading and yes, you can say it is false. The way that it stands today it is entirely false and i hope that this video can act at least in a small way to try and nip things in the bud because i don't believe it's fair for all the parties involved and leave your thoughts in the comments below i'm keen to know what you think and i'll talk about you know whether you think i'm defending bethesda or where whether it actually matters or not later on but let me talk about the situation and then we'll cover that topic so this is about the fallout new vegas bonus situation or story. I don't know if any of you have heard about it. I'm sure a lot of you are aware, but the story goes like this. Bethesda contracted Obsidian to work on Fallout New Vegas. We all know that, right? And of course, there was a payment that took place for the game. But in addition to that, in the contract, there was a clause that said, Obsidian, in rough terms, if you reach 85 plus on Metacritic for the game, you'll get an additional bonus payment for your work, right? That's the way the story starts, and I believe it began, or the story started, in like 2012. It was based on a tweet from Chris Avalone. You all know who he is. He worked on the game in addition to a bunch of other stuff. It was based on a tweet that he did, which said the following. He was responding to a fan, I believe, about the payment of New Vegas and what happened with that. The tweet's since been deleted, so I can't provide the full context, but the tweet, as per some articles that I saw, was, the follow was as follows. Fallout New Vegas was a straight payment, no royalties, only a bonus if we got 85 plus on Metacritic, which we didn't. That was the one tweet that I could find, and I believe that's where the story has begun. So, as I said, that's the way the story started from Chris Avalone, you know, from, from himself, from, from his own mouth. That's where the story started. And ever since then, the story has been spun in such a way to make Bethesda to seem like this incredibly bad guy on this topic. To make it seem like Bethesda absolutely screwed obsidian out of of this bonus for fallout new vegas because as we all know in the end new vegas ended up getting 84 on metacritic and when this discussion came up on twitter the other day these are some of the versions of the story that i saw that i want to bring to your attention and hopefully exemplify my earlier statement about how the story as it stands today is completely misleading okay so i saw statements that Obsidian didn't get paid at all because New Vegas didn't reach an 85 score on Metacritic. That Obsidian had asked for the bonus to be put in there in the first place. That it was Bethesda's fault that the game didn't reach 85 on Metacritic due to bugs and them not offering up their own QA department to help out Obsidian. And that Bethesda actually wouldn't allow Obsidian to work on Fallout ever again unless they reached 85 on Metacritic. I'm not going to name names or anything, but these are the versions of the story that I that I saw. And just based on that initial tweet from, from Chris Avalon, you can see how the story has been spun. You can see how things have been developed in a misleading way to make Bethesda to seem like this incredible bad guy. And because of that, one, I suspect Chris Avalone deleted the tweet because he didn't believe that the way the story as it you know, stood today was true, so we wanted to get rid of that. I'm just, I'm just you know, speculating on that. I don't know exactly why he deleted it, but that might be the reason. But also, secondly, he's had to sim since come out since then and provide clarifications about the story and, and what actually occurred between Obsidian and Bethesda with Fallout New Vegas. So he said the following in a tweet. Internet. If you ever find yourself in the middle of, the, of a debate about how Bethesda screwed New Vegas out of a bonus, please feel free to ping me or quote this. They didn't. They put in the Metacritic clause in our contract as a bonus. We never asked for it. And in follow-up tweets, and they never had to put it in the first place. The bonus was something outside of the regular contract specs. Hope that helps. And then finally, they have another. he has another tweet that says, The bugs depress the score but the bugs were ours. No developer wants to release a buggy game, but the ship date was always clear, and that's what you work towards. That's not Bethesda's fault. The lesson was stop adding and start fixing. So this is from the man that did the first tweet in the first place back in 2012 that actually worked on the game 
and that has provided these init the, these additional clarifications. By the way, this was a year ago, right? So even though he's done these tweets a year ago and they got as much attention as they could, people still believe this crazy version of the story as it stands today. And I feel like, you know, for all of Bethesda's faults and for all the other stuff that you can criticize them on, and, and, there's, and there's a bunch of stuff that you can criticize them on, right? Like I've talked in recent times about some of the stuff with Starfield that I didn't like, the performance issues that we saw, etc. I talked about stuff that, that I, I did like as well, but I pointed out that. I've talked about the Fallout 76 situation and how I believe the game is in desperate need of content. Like, there is a bunch of stuff that you can legitimately criticize Bethesda for, just like any AAA publisher out there, because none of them are perfect, right? But what you shouldn't be doing is taking a story, screwing it up, and, and, and twisting it in a way to make them seem like the bad guy when in reality, that's not actually what occurred with the situation. When in reality, you are just being completely misleading and you're almost lying to other people that you're telling the story to, right? Like, it's very clear, based on Chris's tweets, that Bethesda added in as a bonus, said, you know what, you're still going to get paid. Of course they still got paid for New Vegas, right? Like, no no developer is, is signing up to a speculative contract and saying, we'll only get paid for the entirety of our work if we reach this certain Metacritic score. That's not what occurs in the games industry, right? They still got paid. They still got paid for their work on the game. But Bethesda, of their own accord, added in, added in this additional bonus that said, look, if you reach 85, we'll also give you this additional bonus. And New Vegas didn't reach that bonus or didn't reach that score. So Bethesda didn't pay the bonus. And... I think based on just that, if you if you don't account all the other kind of lies and, and, and the way the story's been spun, just based on that, I understand that some people say, well, you know what, they just, they they were a point off. Why didn't you pay pay them on that? Is it, it's, a, it, it's kind of a little bit unfair. I can understand if people make that argument, right? Though I will say in response that it was a contract, the contract was clear, they didn't reach it for a variety of reasons, so they didn't get paid, all right? If you're in school, and you reach, you know, in, in Australia, it's 49. Like, if you get 49 and you fail or 50 and you pass, but you just get 49, your teacher's not, in, in, in a lot of situations, they're not going to be like, oh, yeah, we'll just, we'll just pass you, right? You're going to get a 49, right? It's, it's clear in the terms of the contract that that had to be achieved for them to get the bonus. And they didn't, so they didn't get the bonus. That was, that was, that was the situation. It, it was as simplistic as that. Bethesda didn't say, you're never going to work on Fallout again unless you do this. Again, it wasn't a speculative contract that said the only way you're getting paid is by reaching that score. And they didn't screw them out and did not offer up their QA department. Like, all these versions of the story are just completely false. I don't know where they've come from, but it's just the way the story has developed over time. And we just kind of need to take a step back and, and realize that is not what occurred. That was the true situation that Bethesda added it in of, the, of their own accord. They didn't reach the score, so the bonus wasn't paid. It's as simple as that. If you want to read into that version of the story what you will, will, the real version of the story, fair enough, right? But don't don't keep perpetuating these lies of what occurred that just absolutely aren't true, especially when the person behind the story has come out, out on multiple occasions to try and clarify it, right? Do a little bit of research, search a bit, it's not that hard. That is the version of the story. So can we all just stop talking about how Bethesda screwed Obsidian out of this bonus payment? Like, for, for as, as amazing as New Vegas was, and it's one of my favorite games of all time, put tons of hours into it, did all the achievements, no one can question that. The state of the game at launch was not good. It wasn't good. And you can say that it was because of the 18-month development cycle. It was very short. It absolutely is short. 18 months was absolutely short. And I believe Bethesda should have said, you know what, 24 months, fine. But Obsidian also agreed to that. And as Chris said... In his own words, they kept adding and adding and adding rather than fixing and fixing, right? So go take a step back to when New Vegas was actually released. I remember vividly reviews about the, PS the PlayStation version in, in particular from IGN, I believe, and how many bugs they found with that game. I was okay on 360 because I came in a little bit later, but that game was not in a good state at launch. So it was probably a surprise that it actually got 84, right? <laughs> like... It's an amazing game, but let's at least appreciate that reality and that Bethesda didn't actually screw anyone out of a payment. So that's all I'm going to say on the story. You know, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Again, if you still feel like it was unfair because it was a point short, fine. I totally understand that. 
But for me, the line had to be drawn somewhere. I, I, I don't even like the clause in the first place, I'll be honest with you, right? To base something off a Metacritic score, it, it's like, it's silly, in my, in my opinion. I, I, I would never have that in the first place. Typically, like, you, you should be having bonuses tied to how much revenue a game generates. That, that's the main thing. I can understand why, though, Metacritic score is still important to a lot of developers, especially back then. Like, Metacritic was almost the be-all and end-all. Nowadays, not so much. Take a look at Diablo Immortal. It has, like, 0 0.4 in Metacritic, and it's still made $24 million in the first two weeks. So, it's not everything as it used to be. But still, I think it's a silly clause. But the clause was there. It wasn't met. That's the story. Read into that at what you will, but don't draw fake conclusions about it. So anyways, my senators, that's all from me. I hope you enjoy this video. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments below. And until next time, this has been Lone. Please take care of yourselves. And would you kindly keep fighting the good fight.